Hello Matrix, today we're going to start going through plant hormones. Yesterday you should have watched uh, the lessons and gone through the notes. I'm just going to go through some of the notes now uh, in more detail. Okay, so plant hormones, how plants respond to the environment. So plants also have hormones that they produce and remember a hormone is something that is produced in one place in a plant and has an effect on another place in, in a body, not just a plant, in the body. So it's produced in one place, for example we're going to take a look at what we call auxins. Auxins is produced at the very end tips of a plant but it has an effect lower down in the plant. So what does CAPS need you to know about plant hormones? So we need to know the general functions of three main hormones, auxins, gibberellins and abscisic acid. Be careful, a lot of textbooks are discussing more than that. You don't need to know more than that. Those are the three that you need to know and you need to know the effect of those. We also then need to know how do we use these plant hormones and we use these plant hormones to control weeds in gardens and um, in when we are planting fruit, uh, fruit uh, stuff and then also the role of auxins we know we need to know about geotropism and phototropism. We're also going to go through plant defense mechanisms which include the, uh, things like thorns and chemical attacks against when plants are being eaten. So plant hormones the first one we're doing is auxin. <clears throat> so auxin brings about bending reactions in plants. So uh, plant bending towards the light. So if you take a look at any plant that is in a house, for example, close to a window, you would notice that those plants will grow towards the light. And this is called a tropism. So tropism is a growth. It's how it grows. And then in case of a phototropism, we will see photo refers to light, and like a photograph. Um, and then of course we also have geotropism. Geotropism refers to geo, like in the geosphere, like in soil, ground, rock. So geo refers to, will refer to in this case to how the plants grow into the ground and that will be because of gravity. So <laughs> when we take a look at auxins, they promote cell division and are also responsible for cell elongation, making cells longer. Now if we take a look at the examples over here, if I get light coming from the top of the plant, the plant is going to grow upwards because the cells lower down is going to become longer and longer and longer. If I take a look at when light is coming from the side, auxins is produced at the very tip. We say it's produced in the meristem, in this case the apical meristem, and then moves lower down into the plant. As it moves down, it actually doesn't like light. So auxins will move away from light. Auxins will move away from light. And as they move away from light, uh, from light, they will actually make the cells on this side become longer. They have no effect on the cells on this side. So the cells on this side will become shorter. And then there will be a natural tipping over because this, uh, the, the cells on this side is long cells, cells on the side is short and so the plant will naturally bend over towards the light. Also when we take a look at, at auxins we get what we call apical dominance. So au auxins are found at the very tips of any stem 
for example, there, 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 all the way. They found at the very tip of the stem. And what we find is that they, um, the, the main ones will be produced in the, this apical meristem over there. And it will actually inhibit, inhibit growth in the other parts downwards. In these parts over here, it's going to inhibit the growth. Unless, unless I cut this off. If I cut this off, then it no longer exists and it will not produce any auxin. So what's going to happen is then these parts are going to start growing quicker. And as gardeners and as fruit farmers, we would use this. If we have, for example, a tree, let me just get another page here. Apologies, let me just move up there and create another page. So if, for example, I, I've got a tree and I want the tree not to grow like a tree but like a bush, what is going to happen is I can actually cut off the, the top here. And what will happen then is that that tree will start growing more bush-like. It's going to grow wider but it's not going to grow longer and we do this if we want to have a bush or we want to make a hedge also I can do this if I want to do fruit farming I don't want the fruits to be right at the top of this tree why because then I can't reach them so um, and I need a ladder to be able to reach them I want them to grow more like a bush so that it is lower down so that when I want to actually get some of that fruit it's close enough for me to pick it directly from a lower point so I don't need a ladder to be able to reach them so that could be another use of auctions now Gibberlins. Okay, gibberlins, uh, they cause the internodes of a stem to elongate um, and they stimulate root growth. So root growth and then in between each internode, that area over there, it makes that area grow longer. And I'm going to show you a picture of that in a moment. Okay, so this is typically the effect of uh, gibberlins. Uh, you can see that the internodes are a lot elongated. The, the, it's not that there's more leaves, there's the same amount of leaves, but the stems grow a lot longer because the nodes in between each leaf tends to be a lot longer. If we expose, for example, lettuce to gibberlins, we find that the leaves are not growing next to one another like we are used to, but they are going more apart from another than one another because the internodes in between, the nodes between that separates the leaves are becoming longer. We also use gibberlins in terms of fruit production, um, and here we see a, an untreated grapes we have treated grapes so these grapes have been treated with gibberlins again you can see that they are a lot larger than the untreated grapes so those are gibberlins so they have they stimulate root growth they stimulate internode uh, to elongate as we can see in the picture over here then plant, uh, then other plant hormones, um, are still gibberlins, sorry, uh, they promote the development of flowers. Uh, so this is going to be important, for example, on uh, Valentine's Day. Because if I produce roses and the roses, the buds open on, for example, the 9th of Feb, they're not going to look nice on the 14th of Feb. I want them to, to be ready on the 14th of Feb 
um, if they bud too late on the 15th of Feb, I'm going to lose a lot of money because then nobody's going to buy my roses that are still closed. So what do they do then is they expose them to gibberellins at the right amount of time so that they, they open around the 13th, the 12th to the 13th of Feb so that they can be sold on the 14th of Feb. So they promote the development of flowers and the opening of flowers. Uh, there's also, uh, we're going to talk about abscisic acid, which is also helps with that. Then, Gibberlins also brings about the germination of seeds, and you'll see with abscisic acid, it does the opposite of that. It actually keeps the seeds from germinating. It keeps them in dormancy. This means that Gibberlins stimulate the growth of seeds. They also increase the fruit size. So we saw from the previous picture that increased fruit size. We can also see uh, uh, an example of it over there. And it also thought that they promote the sprouting of dormant buds. Abscisic acid mostly does the opposite of gibberellins. It slows down any germination of seeds, so it keeps seeds so it doesn't germinate, and therefore is able to bring about dormancy of seeds. It brings about dormancy of apical buds, so it, it inhibits the growth or it inhibits the metabolism, so that it slows down the metabolism of plants. It's also responsible for the onset of flowering in some plants. So in some plants, we can call it can help to. Uh, to make the, the plant flower and it promotes the aging of leaves. Abscisic actually stands for cutting. It actually refers to cutting and the reason why we're using that word is because it cuts off leaves when we don't have to use those leaves anymore. Like in autumn when it cuts off these leaves, abscisic acid. And so it promotes the aging of leaves and it helps to close the stomata in times of drought and therefore reduce water loss by transpiration. We can use plant hormones uh, to be able to control weeds and most of the times we do that by using auxin. By using auxin. And if we take a look at auxin, um, it actually in certain, for example, uh, in in China where they grow uh, a lot of rice in rice paddies um, then we find that when there, uh, when there were certain plants that has produces a lot of auxins they actually call them um, stupid uh, stupid plants or the stupid hormone because what would happen is that these plants, these rice plants, would grow so tall that they cannot support their own weight and they fall over. So they actually kill themselves. And so similar to that, we're using auxin-based herbicides to kill certain plants. And I'm going to show you a picture in a moment of how that works. So if it promotes growth, if it promotes a lot of growth in certain plants, we find that if the leaves grow too quickly and too much, we find the following scenario where the leaf folds over on itself and then it cannot photosynthesize properly and then it dies. And so most of the times we use this to kill broad leaved plants. Broad leaved plants. So basically we say broad leaf plants. Uh, definitely not mono, monocots, mostly dicots that we are trying to kill with this because the, the leaf can fold over on itself and then it can't photosynthesize properly. So weed killer, uh, so if we have auxin in high amounts we can use it as a weed killer uh, but we must be careful for not using too much because it can also then result in the death of other plants. What's nice about using auxin as a weed killer is it actually has no effect on humans or animals um, and then 
the other advantages is that I don't have to go and pick out these specific weeds. If you have something with a very broad leaf, I'm growing something with very thin leaves in an area and then if something along came and he's got very broad leaves it's going going to kill the th uh, the broad leaf plant but it's going to keep the the thin leaf plant so tropisms uh, refers to uh, a bending reaction of plants with a, a response to a stimulus and we discussed two types of stimulus we discussed phototropism and geotropism. Phototropism bending towards the light and geotropism bending towards gravity. The tropism is brought on by auxins. Auxins cause it. The direction of the tropism is dependent on the direction of the stimulus and the auxins are found in the tip of the roots and the shoots um, because what they did, you'll see with some experiments, if we have a coleoptile which is the, the first stem of a, a plant and we, we cut off the tip of that, uh, that stem we find that there's no tropism happen, happening so when they cut off the, that section there's no tropisms happening Okay, so uh, you do not know, need to know these names in such detail. You only need to know that there is um, auxin. And let's take a look at the different tropisms. Okay, so geotropism, phototropism. Uh, geotropism, here yeah, we can see it's bending towards the light. And there it's bending towards the light. And with geotropism, what I'm finding is that it the, the root will bend towards gravity but the, the stem will bend away from gravity it has to go upwards we also get hydrotropism but they don't discuss it in, in such detail you don't need to know about hydrotropism just geotropism and phototropism okay so how does this work so for, for the root for the root. Let me just get an extra page here that I'm going to insert. So in the case of a root uh, or the plant, let's say I've got a plant over here. Uh, let me draw it quickly. So I've got a plant and I place it. That's the root side. And these are, that's the stem side with the leaves. Okay, so what we find is that auxins tend to lower according to gravity. So they fall, they, they, they follow gravity. And so if, I'm going to just draw some auxins over here. So they fall and they fall towards gravity. But they have a different effect on the stem than they have on the root. In the root, they slow down the growth. They slow down the growth on this side. And so which means that my cells on this side is going to become longer and longer and longer. These cells are going to become longer and these cells are going to stay short. And the effect of that is that my plant will grow or my root will grow downwards. In the case of the stem, the auxins promote growth. So as the auxins promote growth, the cells on this side becomes longer and on that side it stays shorter and so my plant grows away from gravity my stem, not my plant, sorry, my stem grows away from gravity and it grows upwards now this is a very nice question that they ask in terms of the end of the year exams they give you a little plant and they say to you if there's a stimulus of geotropism or show me the effect of geotropism and so then you have to draw the fact that it it grows the root side grows away, uh, towards gravity and then the stem side grows away from gravity let's talk about phototropism and how phototropism works uh, with regards to auxins 
and then we'll go into the experiment on that. So normally what they do in this case is they give you actually a pot, a, a, a pot. You draw a bit of pot there, there we go, there's a pot. And in that pot they actually then draw a plant. And let's give it a nice flower, there we go. And then they show you that there's some stimulus of light. So there's some stimulus of light. And the stimulus of light can be from this side, for example. And so what's going to happen to the auxins is the auxins don't like light. The auxins are produced at the tip, but they don't like light. So they're going to then concentrate on the other side, the dark side of the plant. And as they concentrate on the darker side of the plant, the cells on this side are going to, be, going to become longer and the cells on this side is going to be shorter and the effect will be that the plant will tip over towards the light. So the plant will start growing towards the light because the cells on this side is longer and the cells on this side is shorter. So that's phototropism. So how did they discover phototropism? They did a few experiments. Uh, and here's one example of an experiment that they do. They actually then expose a coleoptile, uh, which is a, a primitive stem. It's the first stem of a plant, a, a young stem. And they expose it with light from up top. And as they expose it from light from above, it grows upwards. Then they expose it for, uh, with light from the side and they see that it bends away. And then they expose it so that the exposure will be turning this around the whole time. This is placed on a device that turns it the whole time. We're going to show you what the device looks like in a moment. And then it grows upwards as well. And the other thing that we are finding is that we, have, we can cap it. We can put a cap on top of it, a dark cap that, that limits the light that gets to the tip of the root and then we don't find any growth. And so there's various experiments we can do towards this. This is one of those. This is called a clinostat. And a clinostat is basically just a little device that has got a plate on it and it will make the plate rotate the whole time. It's going to make it rotate slowly the whole time. So that when we place it on a clinostat, it's going to turn the whole time and we're going to find that the plant gets even light from all sides and it's just simply going to grow um, normally or upwards. But if we place it in a still standing environment, it's going to grow towards the light. Uh, alternatives that to this experiment that I can do is I can have the very same experiment, but when I place my plant inside the box, there's my little plant. When I place my plant inside the box, I can actually make openings on more than one side. And I'm going to find the same effect as I would have with a clinostat. Some other experiments that they have done is they actually cut off the tip of a, a shoot and then or you can uh, then there's no growth or you cover it with a cap as I said you cover it with a cap or you can actually put some agar containing auxin on, on either side um, on different sides of that cut off that get cutting and what we find for example in this case with when we put the auxin on this side is that it will actually bend that side because the cells on this side are going to become longer and the cells on this side is going to stay shorter. There's another experiment that, that they do um, similar to the one on the previous page that I showed you. So this one bends towards the light, that's the control. If we remove the tip there's no growth. If we cap it there's limited growth and if we ca uh, if we if we cap it with a transparent cap, it still bends towards the light. Um, 
and then also if I cover the base I also find that there's no effect because auxins are produced in the tip of the stem. Auxins are produced in the tip of the stem. They love giving you these diagrams in the in the exams and asking you why and you have to explain and you have to explain or draw the growth. 